is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. You didn't come say hi to me. And welcome to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors meeting. Supervisor Chukri, would you please introduce your guest who will lead us in the invocation and pledge today? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'm delighted to have Robin Schaefer with us today. Uh, she is actually my appointee to our Board of Health and uh, is an icon given, Robin, your number of years as a nurse. Uh, she has been a nurse for four decades, 40 years. Uh, she led the Nurses Association here in Arizona uh, for I think more than 10 years. And uh, there's kind of a, a special purpose as to why I, I chose Robin because tomorrow uh, is uh, National Nurses Day. And so it's, I think, very apropos to have her uh, lead us out this morning uh, in the invocation. And, and God only knows what she has seen the past 18 months. Uh, and so we're very grateful, Robin, for all you do for our community and the healthcare uh, arena and also uh, in leading us and leading my representation on the Board of Health. So I'll turn it over to you. Please Thank stand. Thank you so much. Lord, we ask your presence at this meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Provide guidance to the board as they face the challenging issues before them. Even if there are different opinions, please give each member of unity of spirit. Give, guide them to listen politely as others share their points of view. Help them work as a unified team in developing ideas for good governance and a shared mission for the benefit of our great county. And Lord, please keep our nurses strong and healthy in every area of their lives. They are tired and exhausted in performing their duties. Give them the physical, emotional, and spiritual comfort they need during this challenging time. Protect them, their families, children, and everyone under their care. Bless their labors and fill them with grace whenever they feel depleted of hope. And now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Robin. And I've gained a great appreciation for your profession because my son-in-law is a nurse practitioner and I know what he's been through in the last uh, year. They've actually sent him to New York and to a couple of places in Texas to help out in, with this pandemic. So uh, certainly yeah. been an education. It's changed all our lives. So We're thank you, you sir. thank you again. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much, Robin. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Good morning. Supervisor Chukri? Here. Supervisor Gates? Here. Supervisor Hickman? Here. Supervisor Gallardo? Here. Chairman Sellers? Here. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the pet showcase by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. Monica, will you please introduce us to the star of today's pet showcase named Moscow? Good morning, thank you. Moscow's about eight years old and isn't he a handsome guy? He actually has one blue eye and one brown eye. He's really incredible. He's adventurous, he's got a great personality and plenty of energy for his age. He loves to explore outside, run and play, go for walks, and he isn't thinking about slowing down soon. His adoption fees are sponsored thanks to the Bissell Pet Foundation, who is helping us empty the shelters by sponsoring the adoption for dogs and cats. The event is taking place at both shelter locations today through Sunday. And sponsorship includes your pal's licensing fee, spay or neuter, microchip, and vaccinations. For more information, visit our website at pets.maricopa.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? I have none this morning, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the appointment of a constable for the West McDowell Precinct. Supervisor Gallardo, would you uh, 
like to take this, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to uh, move forward and appoint a uh, new constable in our West McDowell Justice Courts, um, uh, Rudy Santa Cruz, who uh, served in that position for a number of years, reached out over the summer during, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, and was um, really concerned uh, around the pandemic, around the whole COVID uh, issue. He, uh, he was towards the end of his career, was planning to step away at the, at the final uh, last two years of his term. He was going to retire, and him and his wife were going to travel and have fun and do all the, all, all, all the fun stuff, uh, and was really concerned. So um, he decided, after giving it much thought, that he would step aside uh, early and uh, resigned. I try to talk him out of it, <laughs> but I understand. I mean, the pandemic was is scary. It still is. It's very scary, and and he you know he took his health and his family uh, as a priority, which he should. And uh, he decided to step away. So, uh, Mr. Santa Cruz, Rudy, good friend, uh, still uh, serving virtually on, on a school board, uh, but I know will continue to be active um, uh, throughout uh, uh, the, the, the community. He's just a, a great guy. He's always involved and has served as a constable for a number of years, like I've said. And uh, I just want to thank him for his service and all the work he's done on behalf of Maricopa County. Um, which opened up, of course, a vacancy uh, here in the Justice Court for West McDowell. Um, I'd like to make a, a, a nomination and, and um, would love to have a few words uh, after that, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay. But for now, I would like to uh, make a motion to appoint uh, as our new constable for the West McDowell uh, Justice Precinct, uh, Byron Rhymes to step in and be our new constable in the West McDowell Court. Okay, thank you. The board will now consider item number five, the appointment of a constable for the West McDowell Precinct. All those in favor, please oh, say we aye. Need, we need a second. Yeah. Oh, we need a second. I would second that, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That most motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, our, our newly appointed constable is sitting here uh, in the back, uh, Byron. Thank you so much for putting in uh, your name and uh, accepting uh, this position. Uh, I believe our clerk is prepared to minister the oath if you'd like to step up and... Uh, We'll go ahead and minister the oath, and I'll say a few words to embarrass him. Thank you, Brian. And, and Mr. Chairman, once again, congratulations, uh, uh, Byron, and I appreciate so much for your willingness to step up and serve in this capacity. Uh, Byron has just been an outstanding individual in the community. We had a couple of applicants that we were considering, uh, both very involved in the community. Uh, Byron um, uh, comes from this area. He attended Carl Hayden High School and has uh, been so active uh, in working with our youth. Um, this is, gives you an idea, I was just given this, but this gives you an idea of what Byron gets involved in. This is a basketball tournament that they're doing. It's a Cinco de Mayo basketball tournament that they're doing over here at the park. It's inner city kids that are gonna get together and, and uh, play bas basketball. 
you even teach, right? Don't you, t or coach? Uh, Camelback. 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 So the, his involvement in the community, uh, continue to get the, the kids engaged, uh, working with local law enforcement, having that interaction needed more now than ever before, uh, having uh, young uh, kids of color to be able to interact with law enforcement and build that relationship. He does that um, tirelessly. Uh, so your work throughout the community is felt and I appreciate so much for what you do. And I wish you the best, and I know you do a great job as our newest constable. Okay, and I would like to ask the board now to come out front to get a picture with the new constable. Chairman, members of the board, Supervisor Guyano, I would like to thank you guys for this appointment. I plan to do my best and at the best ability that I can and walk by my faith of God and to give him the best judgment in every situation. Thank you guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item six is presentation of the 2021 Maricopa County Stormwater Pollution Prevention Poster Contest. Uh, I will ask uh, Darcy Cober, Director of Environmental Services, to come up and present the winners of this year's contest. Darcy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the Maricopa County Stormwater Pollution Prevention Poster Contest has been running for 12 years here in Maricopa County. It's for students in third through sixth grade. Uh, the students create posters each year based on the annual theme, and they're then voted on by employees and based on art style, originality, and how well they convey the stormwater message for that year. This year's theme was Let's Get Busy, Pollution Isn't Pretty. Winners are featured in the annual stormwater calendar. They receive an award certificate and prizes from our sponsor sponsors. This year, we received 150 entries from 11 schools, which is great considering the challenges that arose during the pandemic and that most of the students were operating in a virtual environment. We have three winners from third through fourth grade and then three winners in the fifth and sixth grade category. The first place winner in the third and fourth grade category is Brooklyn Sims from Sequoia Elementary. Second place was Luca Perrys from Sequoia Elementary. Third is Paige Downen from Mendoza Elementary. And then in our fourth and fifth grade category, Trenton Watson from Pomeroy Elementary was in first place. London Gibson from Mendoza Elementary. And third was Robin Gardner from Stevenson Elementary. We want to congratulate our winners and also thank all the teachers and students who support this annual contest. We also want to give a special thanks to the Board of Supervisors and also the Arizona Department of Education who helped get the word out on this, con on this contest this year as it was a little bit more challenging than it has been in previous years. Uh, the winning posters have been posted to the Maricopa County Environmental Services website on our stormwater outreach page if anybody would like to visit those. And the printed calendars will be out later this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I, I get a lot of positive feedback from our schools uh, who participate in this. Uh, it's really uh, a very um, popular contest. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. We got a lot of young, talented uh, kids in our county, don't we? We do. So thank you again. Thank you. Okay, 
Next, we have a recognition award for our internal audit group. I have the honor of recognizing the county department that has exceeded our expectations. I'm pleased to announce that our internal audit department is receiving this award, award for their work on the small business COVID-19 relief program. That's in support of the board's efforts to provide economic relief within Maricopa County. Internal audit assisted the Department of Finance in reviewing applications from small businesses and nonprofits seeking financial help for losses resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. I'll give you a few of the internal audit highlights. They reviewed over 5,000 applications and related financial information to verify approvals and rejections. They averaged one to two day turnaround time for up to 100 applications per day. They developed a database to coordinate the final grant award decisions and payments. They performed data analytics and dashboard reporting of pro program progress and they supported nearly seven, 70 million in grant payments to businesses and nonprofits Im impacted by the pandemic. So I'd like to ask Mike McGee to please come forward to accept the award and take a picture with our board. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, on behalf of the internal audit department, thank you for this recognition award. We are truly honored to serve the county and grateful for your ongoing support. I want to thank everyone in internal audit for their hard work on this project. It was an all hands on deck moment and everyone stepped up to the challenge. I want to especially thank Petra Carroll, who organized and led the department's efforts on this project. I also recognize that this project was a team effort across multiple departments. In particular, I want to recognize our partnership with Bridget Harper, Robert Harwood, and their team in the Office of Budget and Finance. We worked hand in hand with them to make sure that financial assistance got out to the businesses as quickly as possible. I want to share a little about our experience during this project. <clears throat> Historically, our department has focused on internal operations of the county, promoting the effective and efficient use of county resources. Assisting in this business relief program provided us an opportunity to uh, make a positive outward impact on the community. The process of reviewing the grant applications and related, related financial statements uh, opened our eyes to the significant losses local businesses were experiencing. Our team was so proud to assist and see the difference that Maricopa County is making in our community. Going forward, the county continues to play a critical role in helping those who have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. Our department stands ready to assist the board with their ongoing efforts to respond to this pandemic. I want to again thank you for this recognition and more importantly, I want to thank you for your leadership during this pandemic and quick response to the needs of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I just want to congratulate Mike McGee and the whole internal audit team. Um, the work that you did made such an impact on people's lives, literally allowed small businesses to keep their doors open. but. 
I don't want you to take too long of a break because we've got some American Rescue Plan money coming, and I'm thinking that you guys uh, can play an important role again. So thank you so much. Thank you. We're counting on it. <laughs> And Mr. Chairman, just I couldn't agree more with the sentiments made by uh, <clears throat> made by uh, Supervisor Gates. Just thank you to the entire audit team. They've just been a, a wonderful, uh, uh, not only just partner, just part of the family here in Maricopa County and just doing a great job. Thank you, Mike, for everything you do and your team. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Nothing okay. other than to mention, Mr. Chairman, that uh, Mike certainly has earned his keep uh, over the past three years. Uh, we, as a board, have not really understood the importance of auditing, uh, as many of my colleagues will admit. So this is well-deserved. Uh, it's a great accomplishment, and uh, sorry I can't be there in person to congratulate him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Okay, well, thank you again, Mike. Well done. We really do appreciate the work that you're doing and uh, what, a, what a, a great time to do what you did. So thank you. Okay. Now we will move to a commemorative presentation by the National Association of Counties. Oh, we seem to have a very active morning before we get into the meat of our agenda. So next, I'm pleased to recognize Jonathan Shuffield from the National Association of Counties. He's joining us today to recognize this board and the Mar Maricopa County Attorney's Office regarding our efforts during the elections of 2020. Mr. Shuffield, please come up to the podium. He's there. Uh, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning to the members of the Board of Supervisors and for everybody who attended today. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. My name is Jonathan Shuffield, and I'm an Associate Legislative Director at the National Association of Counties. I'm here today not only on behalf of NACO, but also as a proud resident of Maricopa County. NACO would like to thank the members of the Board of Supervisors, our County Attorney, and Mr. Tom Liddy from the County Attorney's Office for your tremendous public service, leadership, and statesmanship during last year's election. Thank you for standing up for our county's unimpeachable record in conducting free and fair elections and accepting the outcome. Thank you for showing true political courage by putting our democracy first. We present these handcrafted pens as a recognition of your outstanding service during this divisive time in our nation's history. These pens are handcrafted here in the United States by a small company named after Jacob Chalice, the engrosser of the U.S. Constitution, whose handwritten version of the Constitution is on display in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. NACO appreciates the leadership you've shown as local officials. And if you'll allow me a quick point of personal privilege. <clears throat> as someone who chose to make Maricopa County my home, I personally thank you for standing up for my fundamental rights as a citizen. It really feels good to know people of integrity oversee my local government. Thank you for your service to our community and for the example you set. Thank you, and I'm going to ask the board uh, and our county attorney's office to come up for a uh, group picture. Uh, and I also would like to ask our county manager, who of course has been an integral part of all of this to join us as I would like to have Craig join us as well.
was my <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may briefly, um, it's been a lot of work since November 3rd, and I want to make sure that the public knows that it's not just the county attorney and one of her senior attorneys that does all that work. Um, I want to thank Jeanette Barksdale, Veronica Cisneros, and Sonia, uh, Sonia Kautzman, who are um, unsung heroes in this, as well as uh, Joe Branco, Joe Vigil, Joe LaRue, the Joes, as we call them, and Emily Crager, who really uh, led this team uh, in order to represent the county employees who work so hard, not on election day, but for years and months and months preparing for elections. And nobody knows that better than you supervisors who yourselves work very hard year after year, uh, making tough decisions in order to prepare for an election. And uh, at the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, it's been an honor absolute honor to represent you and your employees. Thank you, Mr. Liddy. Comments, questions from the board? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, thank you uh, for what you said, your words. It means a lot. We don't hear that every day. So thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that. And I consider it uh, one of the honors of my uh, career to have been a part of this board, uh, one, but particularly over the last six months. And uh, as a lawyer, uh, you know, I can't thank you, Alistair, Tom, and your entire team. Uh, you know, what, what has been done here is something that people will talk about for many years. Uh, and the hard work that you've done, and again, always doing what's right following the law, <clears throat> upholding the rule of law. That's what it's all about. And I believe that one day again, we will all believe in the rule of law. But I know that this team does, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First and foremost, um, thank you, Associate National Association of Counties, for coming down and, and, and giving us this recognition. Couldn't be more pleased. Uh, to, to, to hear your remarks, and I couldn't agree more with what Supervisor Gates have indicated once again. Uh, thank you, Tom and Alistair. Your whole team has just been awesome. Uh, this has not been an easy year. It hasn't. Uh, yes, this last six months has been a little tense, but nonetheless, um, I really believe that we have stood up for what is right, not only for for our Constitution and our laws, but for just the fundamental right of democracy. Uh, I've always said this, uh, it's the most fundamental right we have as, as Americans is that right to vote, that free access to the ballot box to be able to choose who's gonna be sitting up here. And uh, we have stood up and, and made sure that that uh, will always be protected. Um, I'm the lone Democrat amongst four Republicans, but I would never uh, pick any other four individuals to serve with. I, I am so honored to serve with the four gentlemen that, I, the, that are on this board. Uh, couldn't pick four um, classier gentlemen to, to work with. They, they have stood up, they have did what, what is right and, uh, and stood up for, for, uh, for, for our constitution, our laws, and, and that's all we can uh, ever ask for from, from our elected officials, of course. Um, as, as, a, as a former election employee, I say this all the time, um, because it's, it's, it's our hardworking, and, and Bill mentioned this, it's our hardworking elections officials. These are professional staffers that work an entire year, sometimes year and a half, to put together one day of voting. 
I've been there with them, and I know how much work they do. Uh, for a whole year, they don't see their families. They don't go on vacation. They they miss you know their their uh, their their child baseball games or or their daughter's uh, gymnastics or school event because they're there in the elections department putting together this hard work. So it is those folks that have just really been under attack. And yeah, you know, folks may throw rocks at us and then let them. Um, uh, but it's those hardworking elections officials that put everything they can on, 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 on election day. They do it for a whole year. Um, and, and that is, is what I think is, is so critical to recognize. And, and uh, I couldn't be more happier to, to be part of this board. I know this is uh, uh, not yet over. I think we're, we're, we're still in the middle of this ongoing um, exercise, um, but nonetheless, I think at the end of the day, democracy will prevail and uh, we will continue to have uh, a form of government that is represented uh, a form of government. And I uh, couldn't be more prouder to be on this board, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Supervisor. Uh, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, I didn't realize Mr. Garda was a Democrat until just now, so that was uh, an 18th <laughs> You know, I would echo both of my colleagues' comments, and, and I think Mr. Gates let out very well uh, with his comments. You know, we there's a saying that I've said several times uh, that is apropos here, too. It's slow and steady, and steady is fast. Uh, and I think that's what the county attorney's office did uh, under extraordinary circumstances uh, the past year. Um, our distinguished county attorney had heard challenges, and yet... Uh, the ship stayed afloat and, and kept going in the right direction. So uh, none of this is easy. And Mr. Gallardo said it correctly. We signed up for this. So criticism and everything else comes apart, but uh, as a part of that role. Uh, but to keep the focus uh, and keep the direction while people are screaming in your ears, um, that's not always easy uh, to, to block out the noise. And, and I think we did that. I think we did the right thing. We didn't always agree, but we agreed on principle and, and how to move forward as one Maricopa County uh, and one, I would argue, Maricopa County family. So uh, there are days ahead still yet, but but look, I'm looking forward to uh, working on these other issues in my district, and all of us have them. Uh, we know that. Mr. Chairman, you yourself said, I've got an agenda as chairman that I need to carry out. So I look forward to actually embracing this. Uh, I want to thank the, the National Association of Counties Apparently, uh, the gentleman speaking today, Scott, we've got some mutual friends. And um, and so thank you for taking the time. And, and I'm glad you're a resident. Hopefully, you live in my district because the sun shines a lot brighter. Uh, quality of life is much better than the other four. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll get back. Thank you. Thank you very much, Supervisor. Uh, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, echoing all, all the words of, of my colleagues, especially uh, Supervisor Gallardo, that it's been a very uh, much of a pleasure. Uh, and I will look back on, on this past year, year and a half, um, uh, not, with, uh, not with the eyes towards a critic, but uh, with the eyes towards an appreciation for the people uh, that I served with during this extremely turbulent time, uh, reminding everyone that there were not just one election, three elections run uh, during a pandemic. Uh, that we planned for, set up for, and kept our people safe. Uh, so I will always look back in appreciation with that, no matter what this environment and the turbulence that's going on with this, uh, as Supervisor Gallardo said, this exercise that's going on down the street uh, brings us. Um, we'll just, as always, uh, we will uh, take the information under advisement and um, act accordingly. I've asked everyone, and we've stayed professional, uh, service oriented uh, to the county taxpayer, elections by nature, uh, and the administration of elections. This democracy calls for bipartisanship, actually, it just calls us all into being Americans. And I think that we perform that and continue to perform that exceedingly well. We're not Republicans, we're not Democrats, we're not independents, we're Americans when it comes to elections. And Maricopa County stood up. I appreciate the National Association of Counties to come here 
and talk and talk to us and award us as well as our attorney's office talk about elections maybe maybe elections work the hardest in that group and scott jared and now uh the people under um stephen richer uh but our attorney's office has been fantastic through this advising our board and staying in the law uh mr gates said it very well we're staying within the constitution and to find out a pen modeled on somebody that wrote the Constitution, we've been staying in that. We will reflect back. I think history will judge us kindly as Americans uh, administer, administering this election. I appreciate the counties, big, tall, short, and small, taking a look at this and seeing the steps that we took uh, in order to administer a fair election. And I think that's what we are going to find out, just like what we all have in our hearts that this this election was run fair, uh, with integrity, uh, and with hard work, asking for volunteers. Think about that. All the volunteers that gave their time and effort into this election in this, in this county. I was able to uh, go to Wickenburg, and sometimes I wonder if we are in a echo chamber uh, when it comes to some of this, and I found out with my dealings in Wickenburg with 30 people in a room giving our county kudos. Uh, remember, Wickenburg is, has a county line that runs through it. You have a pie on one side and Maricopa County, and I'll talk about that and what I found out during my supervisor comments, but thank you guys. I am really hoping, I hear that she's in the audience. Um, I'm hoping um, uh, Alistair Dell can come up uh, a little bit and talk with pride and how her staff worked uh, during a t very tough time for that office. Um, so hopefully she'll have the ability to, to talk a little bit too, but thank you, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I inappropriately called Jonathan Scott, so uh, Jonathan, forgive me, I apologize. <laughs> Alistair, would you like to say a few words? Uh, well, good morning, good Chairman, morning. Supervisors. Uh, Supervisor Hickman, thank you for calling me up here. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm happy to be here, but I have to say this isn't necessarily about me. It's um, Tom Liddy, who's sitting behind me, um, and his team, who did a tremendous amount of work. We're just proud to be here to support um, our supervisors, our elections, the rule of law, and, of course, all of our county citizens. I do want to thank NACO for this award. I mean, what, what an honor, especially during what all of us have said, turbulent times. This has been a trying year for all of us on many, many fronts. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to receive this award um, and to work with all of you. And I echo comments that perhaps this isn't over, um, but we're going to continue to what we do as a county and hold our head high and work with integrity and do the right thing for the right reasons. So thank you again for this. And thank you, Supervisor Hickman, for... Uh, inviting me up here and uh, Supervisor Sellers and the other supervisors for this. Thanks. Well, thank you for all you do. <laughs> and and I will echo all the comments from the other supervisors. Uh, you know, it, it's just so gratifying to hear some positive reinforcement for the effort that we put into this. You know, we have we have in fact been so careful to follow the law every step of the way through a pandemic that brought some new challenges. When there are any questions, we not only conferred with our attorney's office, they conferred with the Secretary of State, with the legislature, uh, with the attorney general, with the governor's office. We all did to ensure that we were always staying within Arizona law and the Constitution on everything that we did. And I'm proud of what we accomplished through that. And, and to Supervisor Chukri's point, I, I can't say enough about how proud I am that through everything we've done, we are one Maricopa County. We're one team. You know, whether it be the recorder's office, the treasurer's office, the attorney's office, uh, the county manager's office, we are all one team. We're all in this together. And... When we go out, uh, we are all speaking uh, about the same thing, 
and all understand that what we did was was doing things right. You know, I appreciate that in an election, there are going to be times that the candidate that we like isn't successful. And the most difficult part of that is when the facts are truly presented to you, accepting the truth and moving on. And I hope we can get there. So thank you all. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Planning and zoning consent hearings, uh, consent agenda, agenda item number nine, Abbott Cottage Industry Special Use Permit. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on this item? Chairman, Supervisors, we have no speakers or comments for this item. Thank you. The board will now consider planning and zoning consent item nine. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Hickman. I move Thank you. I move approval of the consent agenda, a, a consent agenda item number nine, subject to conditions A through J as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. I will second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Moving on to regular agenda items 10 through 11, Richmond American Homes. I will now ask Jen and Darren to come up on this on these two items. And Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on these items? Chairman, Supervisors, we did receive comments and one speaker form. We have William Lally representing the applicant. He is on the line and he wishes to speak. And we received two comments from Christopher Healy and David Haas in opposition for the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lally, would you like to speak now or after uh, we hear from our staff? Bill, are you with us? Uh, Mr. Chairman, sorry about that. I had to unmute. Um, you know what? I'll wait for staff to give a quick presentation, and then if there's any other questions or a small uh, q and I'd be happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Jim. Chairman Sellers, members of the board, agenda item 10, which is CPA 2020-005, is a comprehensive plan amendment to change the land use designation from agricultural in the White Tank Grand Avenue area plan to single family transitional lot, meaning uh, three to five dwelling units per acre. Uh, that's on 105 acres on the northern portion. And then on the southern portion, it would change to industrial park, that's additional 75 acres. The site is located near the southwest corner of Reams Road and Peoria Avenue near Glendale and Surprise. Agenda item 11 is KZ 2020-102, and that's the corresponding zoning case for the comprehensive plan amendment. And that changes the zoning from Rural 43 and R135 to R16, RUPD, and Industrial 2 in the area. The, we received 24 letters of opposition from the residents of 12 Oaks Estates, which is the large lot community to the west. The opposition is mainly concerned about the proposed density, the industrial uses, and noise and traffic. The applicant conducted a robust public outreach process, which included two public meetings. And as a result of those meetings, the applicant agreed to some additional stipulations to mitigate the neighbor's concerns. And those include creating a landscape buffer along the western border, and also um, limiting homes to one story along that western border, which is the um, border between the 12 Oaks estates and the new development, and then also creating a 100-foot setback for the industrial use, which the industrial use starts approximately south of um, the Ironwood alignment. This proposed development is in the vicinity of Luke Air Force Base, and we routed this case to Luke for comments, and Luke provided a letter stating that this does not, will not negatively impact flying operations. The Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously appro uh, recommended approval for this case, uh, 10 to 0. 
So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, board, any questions for staff? Mr. Lally. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, wanted to just echo a little bit about what um, Jen said. Um, that she does a great job, as usual, uh, of presenting the case. Um, just a little bit more background. Um, before we even file the case, Mr. Chairman, uh, we hosted a neighborhood meeting, virtually, of course, whereby we sent out letters to invite folks to the neighborhood meeting uh, out to 2,000 feet. So the, the the requirement in Maricopa County is to send letter, notice letters to uh, adjacent property owners within 300 feet. Uh, we actually sent it out to include the entire 12 Oaks subdivision to the west of us, which was over 2,000 feet, because we wanted to make sure that everyone was involved, everyone knew what was happening. At the same time, we created a website uh, where we posted the application, posted the draft site plan so everyone could review it, uh, have an understanding what was going on before the neighborhood meeting. Um, and then after that neighborhood meeting, after we took some input from the community, then we filed the case. So we tried to really uh, front load a lot of the interaction with st with the neighbors, with the community. Uh, following those comments, we did make significant changes to the site plan. Uh, in addition to what uh, Jen had mentioned, we moved all of the smaller lots um, to the eastern portion, so adjacent to the industrial um, bottling plant next to us and away from the single family neighborhood to the, to the west. Uh, we increased this large buffer. Uh, we even went so far as picking a particular type of tree that would provide a, a, a better buffer, visual buffer, sound buffer between the two residential properties. Uh, other things including limiting lighting, uh, you know, limited intensive, limiting the types of uses that could go on the industrial property. So there were about nine um, new stipulations that were added around planning commission uh, to address uh, most of everything that was called out in some of the letters of, of opposition. Unfortunately, the letters of opposition also refer to the original site plan. Um, and so I think there was, there was a little bit of confusion as to what site plan was being moved forward, even though we had two full neighborhood meetings, a website for the public to review. Uh, we tried our best to make sure that everyone understood the um, what was happening and what the application was about. As you could see from the original uh, application, there is Luke Air Force Base line is right up against our property. So uh, having Luke's support was extremely um, important and we started off with negotiations with them, of course. So again, going out 2000 feet uh, past the 300 foot, um, the website, the two meetings, we tried our very best to try to address every single concern, you know, down to picking a particular type of tree. Um, and so with that, Mr. Chairman, board members, be happy to answer any questions. There, there are a few letters still left in, in the opposition, but I do feel that we've done um, our best to mitigate all of those concerns with the addition of about nine new stipulations at Planning Commission. Questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, Supervisor Hickman. Well, thank you to the board and, and to you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to get this up on the agenda. And thank you to the, the Planning and Zoning Commission that, that worked uh, very hard and diligently um, with, with uh, what the items that they could do uh, for us listening to the, the, the neighbors out there. Um, I, I will tell Mr. Lally, and, and uh, I, say, I say this quite often on a couple, a couple of fronts, <clears throat> The market, you know, uh, for starter homes or, or homes that people can afford seems to this, the homes continue to get smaller and smaller, and this and these lots feature uh, again. These are these are 45 foot uh, facing lots. It's smaller, um, but there's also a component that's coming as well, and that is jobs. Jobs out in the West Valley along the 303, the 101, good paying jobs. Uh, manufacturing jobs um, coming there, and we're going to need housing for the workers that are going to take these jobs. So uh, it seems like the generation behind all of us uh, are okay with uh, smaller homes uh, for a start, and, and that's fine. I know that's where some of this market is going. 
especially when you consider the costs on uh, on supplies now. And plywood is unbelievably expensive. So I, I, I can understand it. Uh, but here's the concern again, as we grow in the West Valley and as we grow in unincorporated areas, uh, we are gonna have a problem at some point with uh, providing services um, when it comes to public safety. Uh, Maricopa County still does not feature a fire department, uh, but, so, but there's other fire districts and things that are happening there. But I'm concerned, again, with sheriff department coverage. More people means more problems, uh, regardless. And at some point, the development committee or the developers are gonna have to understand that uh, we're coming up on a, on, a, on a problem at some point. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office does as good a job as they can with patrol, but they are, their main task and their main budget goes to running jails. And I don't uh, wanna impact Maricopa County Sheriff's Office uh, when it comes to patrol of, of denser and denser communities in unincorporated areas. So I've spoken to Bill Lally about that. I've spoken to a lot of people about it. I don't know what we can do. Maybe that will wait uh, for a number of years, but at some point that's going to, to be an issue. So uh, with that, um, I've heard from the neighbors. I think they've done a very good job uh, reaching out. I do not know if there's anybody on the phone. Um, I do know that we've received letters. Uh, can I make sure no one is on the phone? Supervisor Hickman, I don't believe we have anyone on the phone. Deb, is that correct? Mr. Chairman, uh, Supervisor Hickman, um, Mr. Healy is on the phone. He is, he is self-muted right now. Um, I would like to give Mr. Healy a chance. I, uh, this, this is the horrible thing about trying to do business during a pandemic. And I want to make sure that if there's anyone that has concerns, even at this point, if uh, if there's the ability for him to address the board. Mr. Healy, are Mr. you? Uh... Go ahead. Mr. Healy, would you like to speak? Is he on mute? He, he is, it appears he's having some audio problems. He has come back in on another line. I just unmuted him, Mr. Chairman, supervisors. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Healy, Healy, would you like, Mr. Healy, are you with us now? Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, um, I know Richmond, you know, stated that they reached out to the community. I can say that, uh, you know, and, you, and you probably saw in our letters of appeal that, you know, we're, we're a bit behind the, the curve on this. I know not all the neighborhoods actually received the letters and, um, and some were just unaware of what was going on and didn't understand exactly what was going on until later in the process. And, and we're honestly surprised that, that all the uh, board of commissioners approved it and I think, I think uh, we didn't really get out there in time to get our voices heard early on. Uh, you know, there's a few that, that did speak up and, and have some uh, suggestions for if the plan was to move forward on the small lots. But uh, the big concern is, you know, it's really gonna impact our area in the county. I mean, we, we don't live in Surprise or Glendale and we're surrounded by those areas and what they're doing with industrial in the small lots and, um, and we really wanna preserve what we have. I mean, the big lots are highly desirable. You know, folks are seeking out those lots and, and they can't find them uh, in too many other spots. And, it, and we don't wanna lose that. And we also don't wanna live right next to an industrial park. And what happens when, you know, this gets approved and now there's you know, what are they gonna to build to the south of us? Cause nobody's gonna to wanna to build, you know, another neighborhood next to an industrial park. 
and then it's gonna happen across the street. And Glendale is gonna to continue to build around our small little carve out of Waddell. And, and it's really gonna ruin the entire uh, area. And, and I hope you had time to read all the letters of appeal and, and the comments for this, but uh, we're, we're really surprised as a community that, that this is going on and that, that um, you know, folks would consider you know, the board and uh, supervisors and commissioners would, would uh, consider approving a plan like this. It just seems like it's it's uh, getting pushed through rather quickly. And, and I think we could come up with a better plan, you know, even half acre lots or some sort of compromise there to, to really meet the true intent of the loop Air Force Base dwellings per acreage as well as you know, the intent was not to take 174 acres, you know, and do 74 for industrial, 100 for residential, and then use that entire footprint for the dwellings per acre calculation of two per acre. You know, because it's it's not just about noise; it's about the accident risk out at Luke. And if you have, you know, a fighter jet that their pattern flies right over our neighborhood. And if they got to jettison fuel tanks or ordnance or, or you know, eject like they have in the past, the plane's going to take out a lot more uh, homes having six per acre than, than one or two. Um, that's all I have unless you have any questions for me. Thank you, Mr. Healy. Thank you. Supervisor Aikman. So, I, uh, yes, I would just uh, like to say that and that this is was um, Mr. Lally um, or or Jen was appropriate signage uh, put out calling into question. I know I, I appreciate um, the reach out that occurred that went beyond uh, trying to find you know more than the 300 foot level all the way to the 2000. They it seems to me like the applicant did a really nice job. Did we do everything or did they do everything? Uh, or did the county do everything of posting signage uh, to let everybody know what was coming. I, my assumption is uh, there's laws with that. Is that did that happen effectively? Uh, Chairman Sullivan, Supervisor Hickman, yes, the applicant met all of the required posting, including posting signs. And then, as Mr. Lally mentioned, they actually went above the requirements. They sent letters to 2,000 feet instead of the required 300, and then also um, conducted two public meetings. So all of the um, requirements have been met and exceeded. How about... Um Maybe Mr. Lally can answer this. How about appropriate things done on the on the street uh, side? Uh, traffic does come up quite often in everybody's district. Uh, as as growth comes out to unincorporated areas, you know these these roads were set up for, um, you know, farm roads basically. Has everything done, been done appropriately uh, with the road the roadways out there? Mr. Chairman, uh, Supervisor Hickman, yes, we. Um, submitted the application, it gets routed to McDot through the process. McDot provides us comments as to what are the improvements along Peoria Avenue that are required for the development. Uh, we look at all of the traffic counts. We are, you know, close to the 303. We are um, surrounded at least to the east of us by industrial properties because that's within the noise contours of Luke Air Force Base. That won't ever be residential. And so um, the, the Peoria, uh, alignments is a major arterial alignment as residential adjacent to it develops those right-of-way widths will be widened to accommodate additional traffic and so but yes um, traffic has been taken into account and yes uh, roadway improvements will be imp will be done with the development which will accommodate more traffic perfect okay um, well with that mr. chairman um, thank you mr. Lally and, and Jen and and uh, the residents out there that did that did reach out to us. Um, and thanks again to the PNZ Commission on, on this item uh, for hearing it. So uh, with that, uh, I move approval of item number 10, subject to conditions A through D, as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission and the resolution uh, provided in our packets. I think we have a 
a motion and a second, Mr. Hickman, from both of us at the outset. I could be wrong on that. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I didn't know if I. I didn't know if I've made that motion yet. Uh, I was. I was. Waiting be, I could be wrong. Okay. I could be wrong. I apologize if I am. I, I don't believe the consent. I think that was a consent. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe we have a motion yet, but we were considering items 10 and 11, I believe, together. Is that correct? That is correct, Chairman. Okay. Well, then, if we're considering, I thought we were going one at a time. Um, on item number 11 that references uh, uh, turning it to industrial, um, I also, uh, well, along with the corresponding motion um, with for Mr. Chukri, I move approval of item 11 also subject to conditions. A through N, as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion carries. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to statutory hearings. Uh, Clerk of the Board. Item number 12, liquor license application, special event license for Anthem Rotary Foundation slash Rotary Club of Anthem, Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center, and Every Kid Counts, Inc. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items 12A through D? We have none, Chairman. Okay, the board will now consider items 12A through D. Mr. Chair, I move approval of items 12A through 12D uh, with approval of items 12C and 12D contingent upon approval of temporary use permit TU 2021012 prior to the special event dates. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Continuing under statutory hearings, clerk of the board continued. Item 13, impact statement hearing on the proposed Tonka Vista Irrigation Water Delivery District. Items 14 through 15, public service franchises with Beardsley Water Company, Inc. and Wanrec LLC. Under transportation, 16A, road file number A698. And 17 through 22 are patent easement abandonments as listed in the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers on or comments received on items 13 through 22? Chairman, Supervisors, we do, we do have one request to speak on item 13, Steve Cabrara. And he is on the line and he wishes to speak on item 13. On item 22, for the record, we received an email from Joseph and Kathy Camiso. This is on item number 22 in opposition. That is for the record. Okay. We do have one speaker. Yes, we do. Steve Cabrara on item 13. Okay, Steve, please go ahead. Members of the board, uh, my name is Steve Cabrara. I'm, on, I'm one of the proposed trustees for the district. We're proposing this district uh, for helping maintain already established infrastructure that is already experiencing the effects of deferred maintenance. The district will benefit the entire neighborhood of which the majority already takes advantage of flood irrigation. Aside from maintenance, the district will also be able to maintain water rights for all properties and will allow us to keep our neighborhood in the incredible lush and green state it's currently in. I've received multiple uh, communications from neighbors in support of this district after being advised of the idea. And I appreciate and thank you for your consideration in approving us to move forward to obtain signatures from our community. Okay, thank you. The board will now, the board will now consider items 13 through 22. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 13 through 22. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county officers, Board of Supervisors 23 through 24, reappointments. 
County Attorney, item 25, official appointments and oaths of office. Under Sheriff, item 26, amend IGA with the City of Glendale. Items 27 through 28, MOU with Constables and Maricopa County Office of Enterprise Technology. The board will now consider items 23 through 28. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. County officers continued under Sheriff 29, monthly donation report, item 30, sole source contract with Thermo Scientific Portable Analytic Instruments, Inc. Item 31, detention officer employee referral incentive. Item 32, donation of personal protective equipment. Under judicial branch, item 33, permanent addition to the fleet. The board will now consider items 29 through 33. Move to approve items 29 through 33, Mr. Chairman. I have a second. motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county management, county manager Joy Rich, item 34, amend county manager form of government resolution R2018-1. Item 35, amend agreement with Valley of the Sun United Way. Under assistant county manager Leanne Bone, Item 36, appointment and reappointment of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board members. And item 37, fund transfers and budget adjustments. The board will now consider items 34 through 37. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 34 through 37. I have a motion. Second. Second. And a second from Supervisor Hickman. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Continuing under county officers, offices, air quality, item 38, amend agreement with Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Under animal care and control services, item 39, Donations from Four Paws and Friends and Lost Dogs, Arizona. Item 40, New Hope Agreement. Under Correctional Health, Item 41, Amend MOU with Banner, U Banner University Health Plans. The board will now consider items 38 through 41. Mr. Chair, move approval of items 38 through 41. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Under elections, item 42, precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 42. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That motion carries with a majority. Continuing under environmental services, item 43, donations. Under finance, item 44, funds, transfers, and warrants. Under human resources, item 45, 457 deferred compensation plan. Item 46, market range. The board will now consider items 43 through 46. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second from Supervisor Gallardo. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? That motion carries. Under human services, items 47 through 48. Amend lease agreements with Housing for Hope, Inc., First Presbyterian Church of Mesa. Item 49, competition impracticable with RSM 
U.S. LLP. Item 50, accept carryover funds from U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Item 51, disposition and purchase of vehicles. Item 52, revocable license agreement for the use of the Mesa Library. Item 53, submit application for grant funding to Arizona Lottery Funds. Item 55, affili affiliation agreement with Be Well Solutions. The board will now consider items 47 through 54. Move approval. I have a motion. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Park and Recreation, item 55, amend Maricopa County Trail Agreement. Item 56, donations. Under Procurement Services, item 57, Maricopa County Administration Building Restack. Item 58, Bank Servicing Agreement. Item 59, Central Courts 12th Floor Remodel. Under Public Health, item 60 and 61, RFP contracts with Ryan White Part A Services. Item 62, amend school district slash organization partnership agreements. The board will now consider items 55 through 62. Move approval. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> Continuing under public health, items 63 through 67, amend IGAs and agreements with Arizona Department of Health Services, City of Phoenix, Town of Queen Creek, Arizona State University, and Chicanos Por La Casa. Under real estate, item 68, amend license agreement with Marisol Federal Credit Union. Item 69, Declare real property land and improvements excess. Item 70, purchase agreement and escrow instructions. The board will now consider item 63 through 70. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 63 through 70. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under transportation, item 71, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider item 71. Move approval. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under setting of hearings, planning and, de planning and development, item 72, planning and zoning cases. The board will now consider item 72. Mr. Chairman, I move of approval of item 72. Second. Move for approval. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under consent agenda, clerk of the board, item 73, duplicate warrants, item 74, stale dated warrants, item 75, secure slash unsecured tax roll corrections, item 76, treasurer's collections and investment summary, item 77, tax abatements, item 78, settlement slash resolution of property tax cases and claims. The board will now consider item 73 through 78. So moved. I have a motion from Supervisor Chukri. Second. And a second from Supervisor Hickman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under addendum. Correctional Health, Item 79, Amend MOU with Arizona Complete Health. Under County Attorney, Item 80, Mark P. Gilman, Property Classification Error Claim.
The board will now consider item 79 and 80. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, under bank deposit, we will now recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Board of Deposit. Under Board of Deposit, item 81, bank servicing agreement. The board will now consider item 81. So moved. Second. I have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Board of Deposit and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Under Flood Control District, item 82, bids and award for East Maricopa Floodway Low Flow Canal. Items 83 through 85, IGAs with City of Chandler and the Arizona Department of Transportation. Item 86, amend IGA with United States Geological Survey Item 87, easement, right-of-way, and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 82 through 87. Move to approve items 82 through 87, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Flood Control Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Under Board of Supervisors, item 88, public comment. Madam Clerk, do you have anything to report regarding public comment email responses? Chairman, Supervisors, we received 16 comments regarding elections and all of these comments have been shared with the board offices. Thank you. Thank you. Item 89, Supervisor Summary of Current Events. County Manager. Nothing today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Supervisor Chukri. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a brief update, uh, and that pertains to something that we discussed at our last board meeting with a DWID uh, in Rio Verde in my district. And I wanna just uh, update my colleagues and share with them that we have got a date selected uh, to meet with the opposition next week. Um, in that uh, in that very area in Rio Verde. And we are going to start plotting and mapping through what uh, the best course of action is to uh, try to address the water issues that, that lie ahead up there. So I just wanted to offer that update to my colleagues uh, and appreciate their graciousness last week as we heard from my constituents on a all too important issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Hickman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but yesterday um, I uh, went to the Wickenburg Rotary Club and had two hours uh, worth of uh, worth of uh, talks with um, uh, business owners, uh, retired uh, business owners from from around the country that have decided to settle in Wickenburg and uh, touching on whatever subjects they wanted to touch on when it comes to the, the county interface and government. Um, they were very well aware of what was uh, happening uh, downtown, uh, but I was gratified to see that uh, they had questions, but to a person, uh, they told me um, that they appreciated how the board has, has uh, behaved um, and how we have gone down a path uh, of which we have uh, following the law. And I appreciated that because I don't, I don't think we, we hear that enough. We, we, hear, that we hear from other people uh, with, with questions that are not asked in a question manner, but statements and opinions, and that's about it. So I was really happy to hear that. But where it really uh, was helpful to see what's going on out there with the pandemic, there was a developer that builds houses, if you remember, uh, during other things I've talked about, um, that there is a county line that runs through Wickenburg. Uh, one side of it is Yavapai, and the other side is Maricopa County. And what he told me uh, was a very nice thing to hear during this pandemic. Um, he said 
that he wishes that he would have purchased a house in Maricopa County, just three streets over, because of how his business is treated uh, by so many different things when it comes to permitting, um, the planning and zoning. He told me straight out uh, that Maricopa County has operated uh, with all cylinders extremely quickly, understanding that Wickenburg is a part of Maricopa County. And he said he does not feel that way on the other side of the line. And I just thought that that was a great thing for Joy and her people to hear, uh, for Jennifer and her people to hear that the county, Maricopa County is viewed in such a great uh, light. And when you consider just how large this county is, maybe we have more people working for it, but that's the thing. We have more people working right now, um, going along the lines of, uh, you know, more permits during the pandemic than the year before uh, issued. And I just thought that our board and Joy and Jennifer and others uh, that have <coughs> providing services up to Wickenburg, that somebody in the business world feels Maricopa County has done very well through this last year versus you know, our neighbor to the north. So I, I appreciate it and thank you for letting me say that. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, real quickly, just want to um, first thank Clint. Clint uh, was kind enough to switch positions with me today. It was his turn to be here uh, in person, but I asked if, if I would be able to switch with him. So. Mr. Shukri, you're going to have to deal with Clint at the next board <laughs> meeting, okay? Just fair warning. Uh, no, I just want to thank Clint. I, w I was hoping to be here uh, because of the appointment of our new constable. Uh, we don't get to make too many appointments, so it it's always a, uh, an exciting time. So thank you, Clint, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, a couple of things real quickly. Again, uh, today, Cinco de Mayo. So there's a reason to um, go have a margarita, I guess. Um, but nonetheless, happy Cinco de Mayo. It's a, it's a nice time to celebrate with family and friends and, I don't know, eat Mexican food, I guess. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's always a, a, a fun time. Um, this week, uh, we've been working really closely with some, some of our uh, urban farming partners, uh, particularly out here in the West Valley, partnering up with many of our schools, uh, getting our, our, our young people engaged in, in, in urban farming. Uh, many of our kids, if you'd ask, Clint would appreciate this. If you ask a, a young person in my, in West Phoenix, South Phoenix, where eggs, you know, where the eggs come from, they'll say, you know, grocery store. Where does the milk come from? Grocery stores. They have no idea. So how do we educate them and, and really get them engaged in, in a healthy eating and, and all that stuff. So it's always been a, a, a good time in District 5 and we're able to engage our young people and uh, the folks that, uh, uh, that are involved at the urban farming has just been a great partner, particularly during this pandemic, providing food boxes and all this good stuff and now working directly with our school. So that's, that's always fun time. And just a big um, shout out again to uh, 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 Rudy Santa Cruz, uh, who stepped down as our West Valley Constable or West McDowell Constable, and congratulations and best of luck to to Byron as he steps in to be the new constable. I can never be constable, Mr. Chairman. I can never evict anyone. I will never be able to evict anyone, but I know it's an important task that they do. It's a very important part of our uh, justice courts, and uh, all our constables do a great job. And uh, I believe uh, Byron was just going to be a, just another great addition to the Constable family. So congratulations, Byron, and thank you, Mr. Santa Cruz, for your service. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, go ahead, Clint. Hey, just, uh, Steve, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, I, I, I totally understand. And as soon as I heard you were going to make an appointment with somebody in your uh, district to a county, to a county job, uh, absolutely. It was my pleasure. And the only person that would uh, say that you were wrong about where eggs and milk come from is the store. Uh, Supervisor Chukri would say it's at a restaurant. <laughs> so um, I, I don't mind where you get them at this point, as long as you it get them. It is 100% a restaurant. That's where they originate and that's where they are digested. So I appreciate the clarification. <laughs> okay, Vice Chair Gates. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to dovetail on uh, Supervisor Hickman's comments about the great work that's being done by uh, planning and development. Actually, uh, April was our highest month ever for permit submittals. Uh, the, the value of that development is $145 million. I mean, again, just an incredible testament to our team and being able to do this in a virtual environment, uh, which, which says so much, uh, and also very grateful for those people who are investing in Maricopa <coughs> County and, and continue to do that. Just wanted to mention uh, on uh, April uh, 24th, I had the opportunity to serve as one of the judges for the Regions Cup uh, competition. So this is the second time they've held this competition. It's put on by the Arizona Board of Regents, and it's a debate competition between two-person teams from the three state universities. And it's a great program because it's not just any debate competition. The focus of the competition is on encouraging civil discourse uh, between young people, which you know we need now more than ever. But the level of the competition was so impressive. Oh, my goodness. Arizona is in good hands. And since I didn't go to any of the state universities, I'm not biased at all. But Arizona State University did win uh, for the second time. Uh, but a big testament, again, that tournament uh, as well, they continued to go forward with it in a virtual environment. And it was really seamless. Uh, so again, a great testament to those at the Board of Regents who put this on. And, and uh, this is a competition now that's, that's here to stay. The winners, actually, it's a two-person team. They both won a $15,000 scholarship. So there's a lot of companies, APS, SRP, DMB, and others who are supporting this program. So really uh, honored to be a part of that. Thank you, Bill. Okay, well, I, I will mention quickly that uh, I did attend an event called the Asian American Pacific Islander Vaccination Event that was uh, put together by the Korean Nurses Association and our Maricopa County Health Department. And, and probably the, the most impactful thing for me at that event, and this it was something that was put together to reach people who had who had difficulty in making appointments to get vaccinations and our desire to get as many people vaccinated as possible. But the thing that was really impactful to me at that event was the number of people that came up to me and said, what a great group you have at Maricopa County Public Health. Uh, I mean, they were there, uh, they were coordinating, they were helping. Uh, and really, really impressive. So uh, thank you again to public health for all you do. Uh, in that same vein, I will mention that I, uh, last Saturday I attended uh, an Asian American Leadership Appreciation Celebration in Mesa uh, and had the honor of being at the head table along with uh, Mayor John Giles and Mayor Kevin Hartke and uh, former Congressman Matt Salmon and there were well over 200 people there. In fact, they, they turned away people from that. And, and again, the significance of that event to me is that the Asian community is more than 10% of my district. And what, a, what an involved, uh, committed group of people we had uh, there representing the leadership from that group. Uh, and, and very, very impressed and, and was really an honor to be there. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that I also attended a Work Zone Awareness Week press conference at Maricopa County Department of Transportation, and you know that the the importance of of us recognizing work zones and being safe through work work zones was really recently brought home because of the loss of one of our own, one of our own employees. So. Uh, you know, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, all that our MC DOT folks are doing, and uh, how well we publicized the Work Zone Safety Awareness Week. So, thank you again to everybody, and and uh, with that, I will adjourn the meeting.